Hey guys, and welcome to this short demonstration of the Toit platform for IoT development. In this demo I'll show you how easy it is to code and interact with your IoT devices using Toit. For this we of course need some hardware. I have put together a simple testbed consisting of an ESP32 development board, connected via I2C to a sensor board. This sensor board comes with the classic BME sensor for temperature, humidity and pressure readings. The board is powered via this USB cable. But please note that no communication whatsoever takes place over this cable. Instead, the ESP32 development board is connected to my local Wi-Fi and all interaction goes via our Toit API. We of course also need to be able to see some output from the device, so I have logged on to our Toit console where we can see these logs and also what apps that are running on the ESP32. I'll get back to the console in a minute. Finally, we need an IDE to write our code. In this demo, I use Visual Studio Code along with a terminal window to communicate with the device through our API. But let's go back to our console and see if we can find my device. As you can see, there are quite a lot of devices here, but I happen to know that my device is called Toit1, so let's search for that. We're going to search it here, and if we click that device, we can get some more information about this particular unit. For the sake of time, I won't go into any details, but instead focus on what is relevant for this demo. First of all, we have the Logs tab. If you click that, we can see the output from the device. But the real magic will actually happen under the Apps tab. Now the idea of an app requires a short explanation. In the Toit world, an app actually consists of two files. One file with code written in our own language tailor-made for IoT called Toit, that tells the ESP what to do, and one scheduling file that tells the system when to run this code. And these two together form an app that we deploy on the microcontroller. So when we deploy our apps from the terminal, they will show up in this list. So let's go back to our IDE to have a look at some Toit code. I have prepared a simple program in a file called bme280.toit that reads the temperature, humidity and pressure from the sensor connected to the ESP32. If you're familiar with Python, you'll probably feel right at home using the Toit language. Firstly, we need some libraries for accessing the GPIOs of the ESP32, setting up an I2C bus, and of course also a library for our BME280 sensor. Then, in the main function, we set up which GPIOs we want to use for the I2C bus and which address to use. We finish the setup by creating an object to re represent our sensor. When this is done, it's really simple to start reading data from the sensors using this sensor object. The sensor readings are subsequently printed to the log with some basic formatting. But we also need a scheduling file for this app, and that is defined in a so-called YAML file. It uses a simple markup language where we first of all give the app a name, in this case measure THP. We then define which Toit file it should be run. And finally, we need to define when we'd like this, this code to run. I have chosen to run it as soon as we install the app on the ESP32, and I have also decided to get sensor readings every five seconds. So let us deploy this first app on the ESP32. And again, note that I'm communicating with the device via our API and no communication takes place locally. Also, remember that we are not rebooting the microcontroller when installing an app on it. We simply instruct the virtual machine running on it to start executing an app. So to deploy this, we simply write a Toit command. In a couple of seconds, we'll get a message that the app is installed on a device. And if we go back to the console, to the apps tab, we can now see that we have an app up and running on the ESP32. And if you go to the logs tab, we should see data coming out from the sensors. So let's take this to the next level. Let us deploy another app in parallel with this sensor reading app. In my IDE, I have prepared a very simple Toit script that just prints a timestamp every five seconds. So let's deploy this app as well in parallel with the other one by writing pretty much the same command as before, but we of course changed the name of the app. If we switch back to the console, we can now see that we have two apps running on the ESP32. One reading from the sensor, and one app that should produce the timestamps that we should see if we switch to the logs tab. And there they are. 
Every five seconds we get timestamps in the log along with the sensor readings from the previously installed app. So this demonstrates the capability of running multiple apps simultaneously on the microcontroller. Now let me show you how easy it is to fix a bug. If you go to the log we can see that we clearly have a bug in the pressure uh, since it shows over 100,000 hectopascals. In other words, there's probably something wrong with the scaling factor. If you go back to the IDE, we can indeed see that the scaling factor is off by a factor of 100. So let's fix that bug. We save the code, go to the terminal and redeploy the app on the microcontroller. And in a few seconds, we have the correct data coming out from the device. This bug fix was basically a five second process that did not require uh, the classic workflow or compilation of the corrected code and flashing and rebooting of the microcontroller. It's just an updated app that is deployed and executed immediately by the virtual machine running on the microcontroller. But let's take this up another notch. The apps running on the microcontroller are totally isolated from each other and cannot crash each other, nor the system as a whole. So let us test that by doing something really stupid in our code. I have prepared a recursive function that every five seconds multiplies two numbers by calling itself. If the second factor is too big, this will become a very deep recursion and we'll end up with a stack overflow. Now, if you would have been working in a classic firmware development environment, this kind of error would have crashed the whole system. But let's see what happened when we deploy this recursive toy code as a third app on our ESP32. And again, we have a third app running that is visible in the list of installed apps on the, on the microcontroller. And if we move to the logs tab, we can see that every five seconds we should get a stack overflow with a human readable message, but the other two apps are running just fine. So let's get rid of that nasty app. We go back to the apps tab and simply press the uninstall button to the far right. And in a couple of seconds, the app is gone and we no longer get the stack overflows if we go to the log. So now you've seen some of the unique capabilities of the Toit platform for IoT development. Do you want to know more? Sign up on our webpage and try it for yourself.